Well, hello everybody. You've just caught me using my 1976 Hoover Dirt Searcher vacuum. The one with the beats as it sweeps, as it cleans action, plus Hoover's height right control for any length of carpet pile, and of course, a power beam headlight to search out dirt in dark places. What would I need with any other vacuum cleaner? This suits me fine. Well, a lot of people say to me, they. They take me to one side and say, ear, nutcase, why don't you get with the times? You don't want an old mains powered bagged vacuum cleaner. That's no good. What you want is a lovely new cordless Dyson. So after all the nagging, I sold about six of my classic vacuums to be able to afford this one Dyson. So let's take a look at it. Yes, folks, I've invested in the new Dyson Gen 5 Detect cordless cleaner. At the time of making this video, this is Dyson's top of the range and the most expensive Dyson you can buy. But does the most expensive mean it's the best? Well, hopefully by the end of this video, we'll have a better idea if you want to part with your hard earned money like I did. Without any further ado, I'm going to take everything out of the box. We'll have a closer look and uh, We'll take the Dyson for a spin. This Dyson vacuum cleaner normally retails for an eye-watering $849.99. But those generous people at Dyson, knowing the cost of living crisis is hitting a lot of people in the pockets, they've slashed it to $749.99. So £750 will buy you this cordless cleaner. What an absolute bargain and what an investment for the future. Right, <laughs> of course I'm being a little bit tongue in cheek there. Here's everything you get out of the box. There is an exclusive version available direct from Dyson.com in a Prussian blue color. I believe it has one extra accessory, the reach under tool. But apart from that, the machine is more or less the same. This is the digital motor bar cleaner head for your carpets and hard floors. It has hair removal veins. So in theory, you're not supposed to get hair wrapped around this machine. But if you do, the roller does slide out for easy cleaning. You've also got an adjustment at the front, a plus for really deep down cleaning. That was a bit stiff. Then the midsection, which is what most people will use it on. And then a minus, that's good for plush pile carpet, lightweight rugs, etc. It just reduces the suction at the head. You also get a new and improved carbon fiber fluffy optic head. It includes the little green light that's supposed to illuminate the dirt so you can pick it up. Quite lightweight, so that's basically for hard floors only. You can use the main head on hard floors as well, but this is your dedicated head for hard floors. You also get the Dyson combination tool. We've got little sort of tool for your upholstery, curtains, etc. with a brush that slots out like that. Nice and soft, you can use that on your Venetian blinds, lampshades, dusting your bookshelves, etc. Then we get the hair screw tool, which is your mini motorized head. That's suitable for upholstery, car interiors, stair carpeting, pet bedding, etc. And again, that's an anti-tangle screw. So it is designed to pick up hairs without it tangling around the brush roll. But again, the brush roll does come out for easy cleaning. This is the wand in this uh, Dyson purple color. But this wand also incorporates a new tool which is built in and it's always to hand. So when it's actually on the machine, you can access this combination crevice and dusting tool. So when you pull it out, you've got a little brush at the front that will push back and then you've got crevice tool for your nooks and crannies and that as I said always lives on board just pushes in and clicks into place for charging and storing the cleaner you get the wall mounted bracket but of course you don't have to put it on the wall if you don't want to you can charge the machine just as it is you can charge the battery out of the machine or you can buy the optional freestanding dock this is the mains charger, obviously. That's what you plug in to the wall socket. And this end plugs into the cleaner. 
instruction wise we get uh, some safety instructions there a quick start guide instructions for mounting the charging dock and we've also got here a QR code you can scan that and get full instructions and further help for your Dyson cleaner and here is the machine itself it's quite a hefty beast with a large battery the battery of course slides out so you can buy separate batteries if you want to extend your runtime just got a little red button there and the battery should just pull off there we go so if you want to you can put put your Dyson away in the cupboard and charge the battery directly like so or charge it when it's in the machine as well and you must charge your battery fully before first using your Dyson it comes with about 40% charge but don't be tempted to use it wait a few hours until it's charged up that fits in there and you can see now Finally, Dyson have listened and they have started to put permanent on off switches on their machines because I've complained about it and I've had a lot of nasty comments saying how weak I am that I can't keep my finger on the trigger. But a lot of people, it's not just me, a lot of people have commented that their finger hurts after a while using the Dyson. So now it is a permanent on off switch here located on the back of the machine. The weight of the machine is 3.5 kilograms and it will take around four and a half hours to fully charge and will give you up to 70 minutes runtime, but that's on the low power setting without a motorized tool. It has whole machine HEPA filtration, a bin volume of 0.77 liters and the air watts are 280, giving you more suction power than any other Dyson cordless. The Dyson should be emptied frequently, preferably after each use, but if you've only just cleaned a small area and you've still got room in the bin, you could leave it until the next time. Just try not to go over the max fill line. When it is full, preferably take it out to your outside bin and you've got a little lever here at the back. Push that down. You can see the flap opens and this shroud should be cleaned of any cleaning, clinging litter, pet hair, dust that could get trapped around there it's automatically wiped clean and hopefully the dust should fall out but sometimes dust still gets trapped in between this cyclone and the outer bin so you just might have to give it a bit of a shake you can remove the bin entirely for cleaning or if you want to empty it properly there's another little button here so the whole bin comes off and it enables you to wipe that out and you can wipe this with a dry cloth or Use the dusting brush of your combination tool just to give it a gentle brush from time to time. So that's the maintenance with that. You will have to wash the filter approximately once a month. Let's try and remember how this goes on. No, already doing it the wrong way. Slides on and then we can just push the bin back and close the flap. This is the filter at the back. It won't operate without a filter in place. If you try to turn it on without the filter, it will tell you, you can just about see there, filter not seated, and it gives you a little animation of how to put the filter in. So the filter, this is supposed to be a HEPA filter. It is washable, but you should leave it for around 24 hours before placing it back in the machine. Spare filters can be obtained from Dyson and other online, online retailers. If you want to use the filter straight away, if you don't want to be waiting for the filter to dry, if this is your only vacuum cleaner, then it's handy to have a spare filter. So that just slots in, lines up, twists, and that's it. So. It's relatively low maintenance on these machines compared to some cordless cleaners I've used in the past. The filters get very dirty very quickly and require frequent cleaning. But with a Dyson, you should get away with just once a month or maybe even less if you have a smaller home. The panel at the back of the cleaner does have a protective film on it, but I'm just going to leave it in place for now. And you'll see with only two buttons, we have the permanent on off button. and also your mode selector. 
When you first switch on the Dyson, it will automatically go into medium mode. If you're using a powered accessory, it will go into automatic mode, which is the mode most people will use it in most of the time. So you can see here on the display, I haven't picked any dirt up, but it is showing you the amount of dirt you're picking up in your cleaning session. I found it's a gimmick, I have to say. You might look at it at first when you get your machine, but when you're using it, you really don't notice it. It's, it's a good selling point if you want to see how many particles of dirt you've picked up. But really, as long as your carpets, upholstery, stairs looks clean, I don't think most people are bothered about that. And you certainly won't be, trust me, after the novelty's worn off, you'll barely notice that. You'll just be concentrating on directing the nozzle where you want it to go. You're not constantly looking at the display. But there you go, it's there if you want it. You've got three modes on this machine as well. Boost, obviously that gives you the maximum suction but the shortest run time. Medium, as I said, it's medium when using a non-powered accessory but that will be auto as soon as you plug in one of the motorized tools. And you have Eco, which might be okay for many homes. Just whizzing around your home on Eco will pick up all the surface dirt and give you the longest runtime. This Dyson Gen 5 Detect is a fairly heavy vacuum cleaner, especially when you're using it for above floor cleaning. So with the wand attached and you're reaching in the corners for the cobwebs, it can be quite tiring. Taking it out to the car, cleaning your stairs, You've got to be aware that it is quite a weight in the hand. Not having the trigger does help, to be honest. Having the permanent on off button, I found that with my V12 Slim, it was a lot easier to use. For car cleaning, it's big, it's bulky. You're not going to get into all the nooks and crannies of your car, even with the crevice tool. You can buy an optional hose, you can buy an optional kit that includes the hose. But I think for this money, Dyson should have popped a hose in the box because the little stretch hose does mean you can stretch into the awkward corners where you can't actually fit the machine. And now with the permanent on off button, it makes it easier to use. You're not having to hold the cleaner and the trigger while directing the hose. You can just switch on and then stretch the hose out to clean. But as I said, that is an optional extra. You can buy that direct from Dyson if you so wish. So all the tools fit directly onto the machine or onto the end of the wand, including the powered tools. So if you want to give your stair carpets a deep clean, you can pop the motorized brush head on and clean your stairs. And of course, we've got the, the smaller tool. You can use this on stairs as well, but you might just want to keep this for your upholstery. Even your mattresses can be cleaned with this tool. And if you've got stairs that aren't carpeted, you could always use the fluffy optic head. Again, it will plug directly onto the machine. For cleaning carpets and hard floors, naturally you'd attach the wand and then one of the larger nozzles onto the end. But you do have the built-in dusting and crevice tool. To access it, you press the red button here and remove the wand and you'll see that it pulls out the brush at the end. So you could use this on computer keyboards, on the television, just dusting around, getting the toast crumbs from around the toaster, that sort of thing. But you can push the brush back and then you've got your crevice tool for your nooks and crannies. So this is really the only crevice tool that comes with this machine. If you want a longer crevice tool, of course you can buy many additional tools direct from Dyson. You could spend at least £200 on additional tools if you wanted to. So that is the only crevice tool and it does have the brush attached. So it's always permanently attached to the machine. You can remove it, of course. And I'm wondering actually, no, that's one thing you can't do with it. You can't use this on the end of the wand. Although it does fit on the end of the wand, which would be quite useful. But, as you can see, it will not fit onto the cleaner body because it needs this part. So, hmm, that's a little bit of a disadvantage. Of course, I'm sure you can buy this separately if you want to buy another one, so you can use it on the end. But personally, if you do want another crevice tool, 
Dyson do flexible tools and other hard awkward area tools you can use so that's something I would recommend as well a hose and another crevice tool would be handy all right let's see how this goes back in there we go just pushes in like that that goes back on and then of course we can pop on the main head for carpet cleaning I'm going to initially try the Dyson on my Saxony plush pile carpet using the default auto or medium mode with the slider control on the head set to the middle position. We'll see how it copes. Okay, here goes. First switch on. Right, it doesn't cope at all. It cut out as soon as I switched it on. I was expecting it to on this sort of carpet the Dyson this Dyson and many of the others I've tested do not fare well with soft pile plush pile Saxony type carpeting so if you've got this sort of carpet in your home then you'll find to make the Dyson work you'll have to use it on the eco setting so I will switch to eco we can do it while the machine's switched off there we are medium eco we'll try again Even on eco, I just feel the head is struggling a bit. So to make the head struggle less, I think I'm going to have to slide the control to the minimum setting. Try it again. Make sure we're still on eco. That's it. As I suspected, on my particular living room carpet, this machine can only be used on eco with the slide control set to minus. The rest of my house has much thinner carpeting and experience of using the previous model, I can use that on automatic or even on maximum, on boost occasionally. Using the motorized head, it's fine. It's just on certain types of carpet, this Dyson and many other Dysons, and in fact many other vacuums I've tested, do struggle so it's not just this machine a lot of them struggle on certain types of carpet now despite the fact I did vacuum this area with my 1976 Hoover dirt searcher we have managed to find some more dirt in the carpet not a huge amount to be honest but there is some ah and something that's quite surprised me because I demonstrate a lot of vacuum cleaners on my channel, I tend to put a lot of dirt on this living room carpet. And it's a while since I've used anything with blue sand, but this Dyson, even on its low eco setting, has found some blue sand in the carpet, and that represents grit, which is the most damaging sort of dirt to leave in a carpet because it's sharp. And as you walk on it, the grit particles can just cut away into the fibers and eventually, cause carpet wear so it's found that there's a, a single red bit of grit as well bit of red sand not sure if we can quite see it just there and some fluff so this carpet has been vacuumed quite a lot since I used blue sand so yeah even on eco the Dyson has managed to find that in my carpet I'm thinking if you have a V15 Dyson and want to upgrade to the latest tech, I really don't think this is worth it for you. If you've got a V10 or earlier, then this would be a great upgrade. You will notice a difference between an earlier Dyson, but really maybe even a V11, it's not worth upgrading. 
I mean, they're a lot of money. If your Dyson still works and you're happy with it, keep it. I wouldn't upgrade personally. I'm showing you this. I have to pay for these and show you them. I give you my opinion to hopefully save you some money or in some cases you do actually buy vacuum cleaners I recommend. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a Dyson. It's not surprised me. It's nothing exciting. It's nothing very new. Having the permanent on-off switch though is an improvement, but it took Dyson long enough to listen to their customers to do that. Um, it's heavy. It's a heavy machine. It's a bulky machine. I'm going to use it more, of course. I will do another video on this machine. I'm going to just do a little montage at the end of this video. I'm going to put some dirt down on my kitchen floor, test out the fluffy head, wherever that's gone. I've put it somewhere. It's behind me. We'll test out this. It is supposed to be improved. The light is supposed to be a bit brighter, but if you're vacuuming a bright room, it's not going to be very noticeable. It is better in a darker room, in darker areas. Just like the old fashioned headlight on my Hoover Dirt Searcher, it's better in dark corners of the room. It will highlight the dirt, but it does still highlight the dust in lighter areas as well. But I just don't understand why there's just one light. Surely put two on and then you've got a real concentrated beam of the laser light to highlight the dirt. So yeah again is that gimmicky i'm not sure but it does work pretty well so what i'm going to do to end this video i'll just do a montage of the machine in action i'll use it on a different type of carpet i'll use it on the floor and then after i've got to use it a bit longer i'll come back and do another review i thought i'd do a first look but yes i don't think it's really worth the upgrade personally it's a lot of money for a vacuum cleaner